That's super interesting. Exactly. Okay. So what's your third? Oh, okay. so and and the third is the responsibility. Like like when when you're put in the leadership role, you don't just get authority and prestige. The reason you get those things is because you have a certain responsibility to uh, you know protect the community, to educate the community, to cause the community to prosper. That's a very common uh, expectation for ancient leaders. You know, you you make the crops grow, you make the right. you know the the animals fertile. Uh, yeah. So that's a super interesting point, right? So mm -hmm. when we're thinking about leadership uh, in the ancient world, you really need to be careful not to impose our, our ideas about what a good leader is going to do. Yeah. I mean, that those are very some specific things about making the crops grow. Yeah. Right? No, absolutely. And, and your sheep are going to keep giving birth in a beautiful way because you have the right leader. Yeah. Right? Totally. Right? Totally. That's absolutely. That's what we think about Obama. Let's say. Well, no, I mean, I, I think in some ways we do think that. Because right. it's about prosperity, right? Right, and so you know, we we have this causal relationship. Like whoever is in the the Oval Office uh, yeah, affects right. the economy, right? Yeah, the sure. economy, you know, does uh, well or uh, poorly, or gas prices go up or down, or something. And and it's it's sort of a common association, I think, that, yeah. that we make. Not in obviously not in the very literal agrarian way that they exactly. might have had in the, the ancient world. Uh, so so anyway, with with the the, the element of responsibility, and I'll, I'll bring this now to to Agamemnon. Just a priori, we might expect, okay, if you're the leader and you have greater responsibility, there's going to be more stress in your life yeah. than there is in everybody else's life. Uh -huh. uh, and this is something that Oedipus actually talks about in the Oedipus Tyrannus, uh -huh. uh, when the the, uh, the community comes to him at the beginning of the play and says, we've got this plague going on, we think you might be able to fix it. And he reassures them by saying, trust me, uh, I grieve. It, I grieve for all of you, even though you just worry about your own individual lives. I, I sort of feel the the communal grief. Okay. And, and we hear a lot of stuff about leaders having to stay awake, right? Right. Like, exactly. Mulling over all the yes. problems. Yes. Epimaleia yeah. uh, is the is the Greek word that that attentiveness or vigilance right. Right. that we still um, worry about. So it, again, to bring it back to to Agamemnon, one of the the questions that I'm really interested in 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 Scroll One. Is okay. He he's he's sort of the he has the most power uh, uh -huh. of of any of the Achaean uh, kings there, but uh, he also has the greatest responsibility, uh, and he's reminded of this responsibility in Scroll Two when Dream comes to him in the form of Nestor and says, "By the way, you know you're not allowed to sleep uh, all the time. You know someone who is responsible for all of these people uh, can't just sleep the night away." Uh, so so to bring it back to to Scroll One. Here, here's the question that I'm uh, very interested in. Why does Agamemnon refuse Crises' ransom? Okay. So that, actually, I'm really excited that you're asking questions. So yeah. I'd actually like to turn around and post that to our community for something to discuss okay. within our forum. Sure. So that's great. I think I think. Do you want to leave it right there? I do. Uh, okay. Okay. Absolutely. That's no, so beautiful. That's the best I, thing I, ever. And I, I don't know the answer to the question uh, right off, and I, I don't really know anyone. I, I mean, I, I posed it. To several people, and uh, yeah, and 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 the, the thing to think about is well, okay, you you um, if you have an answer, you have a hypothesis. What what are the ramifications of that? If if you, if you think you know why he he did this, uh, how does that how does that affect your interpretation of his behavior in the rest of Scroll One? So can you just say a few words about um, gift exchange, maybe just to give some context to people about how gift exchange normally uh, would work in a situation like that? Or well, let's maybe not gift exchange, but exchange. Oh, like well, well with a ransom, right? right. So, so, so we're told in in scroll one that uh, Crises brings a, a countless uh, ransom in exchange for his daughter, and and we know that this is a, a customary uh, process. We we learn, uh, especially in uh, scroll twenty four, that Achilles is someone who habitually does this, right? Like he captures warriors in battle, in particular. I don't think we have any accounts of him ransoming a woman back. Uh, as a matter of fact, but he, he'll he'll take someone in battle, and uh, you're basically left with the option of do you want to kill the person because you're grieving and angry and looking mm -hmm. to avenge, or do you say okay, I will I will forego the emotional satisfaction of killing you in exchange for the satisfaction of being honored uh, and um, and uh, what's what's the word and um, enriched by this this countless uh, spoil that someone uh, brings or countless ransom that someone uh, brings yeah and when we and when we um, see this in the epic I think it says and all the people in Calpus comes and says here I want to give you uh, and it basically says and everyone says yeah give it give the girl back right and he says no so 
So right. it's a super fascinating question that you're posing yeah. to us and for our community. So I hope we can discuss it and then maybe yeah. we can have you back. Oh, I'd love to. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank good, you so much, Norm. This is really yeah, great. My pleasure. Yeah.